Welcome to another episode of One on One with Mitch LaFon. Joining me this week, original Skid Row drummer Rob Afuso. He's in a new band, Four by Fate, featuring Todd Howarth and John Regan, formerly of Fraley's Comet. The new album is called Relentless. It is out now. And yes, I had a very, very small part in making that band happen. So I'm glad to finally see the album out and enjoy the tracks. We also talk Skid Row and... Yes, we do touch upon should there or shouldn't there be a reunion of the original five guys. So uh, without further ado, here is the one, the only, drummer, Rob Afuso. We are speaking with Rob Afuso, currently of 4x8, formerly of Skid Row. Good day. Um, how are you? Hey, Mitch. Hey. Pleasure to speak how with you. How we doing? Good, good. It's been uh... yeah. No, it's been a while. It's it's great to speak with you as well. Thank you, and and uh, thanks for having me on your show. I appreciate it. Yeah, and I, and I appreciate you being in Four by Fate. And I'll I'll quickly relate the uh, the first time that I met you and the guys. You were opening, I believe, for Aerosmith in Ottawa, and the band had decided Skid Row. The band had decided to go eat at the food court at the local mall, and I happened to be <laughs> eating at the food court at the local mall, and then. You know, um, Rachel with his thing in the in the nose was very hard to miss, and he's standing next to me in the line at this pizza place waiting for his slice. And I was like, "Huh, Skid Row guys are standing next to me for pizza in Ottawa. How, how <laughs> surreal can this get?" So, so they <laughs> right. Uh, so the, the good old memory. So, so let's talk. I, I guess we'll start with the current, and maybe we'll work our way back. Um, You've got Soul System orchestras, but you've got Four mm-hmm. by Fate. So, um, right. Four by Fate is something that I actually helped put together. I got John and Todd working on a Kiss tribute uh, song for me, and through that, they decided, "Hey, they like making music together again, and let's get this going." And it eventually became Four by Fate. Um, talk to me how your fate led to the band. Right. Well, um, I, I have to. You know, that's actually a a really sad question because ultimately it was because of the untimely death of AJ Perro, who was uh, working with the guys uh, um, doing the the current album, Relentless, and uh, you know he went off and did some dates with his other band, and he passed away. And um, so I had known John. Uh, Reagan for many years. We live in the same proximity, the same area in the Hudson Valley. And uh, I happened to be talking to the guitarist, Pat Gasparini, who I've known since God, he was uh, he was a little kid somehow. I, I'm not quite sure how <laughs> that happened, but uh, just, you know, also a local guy. And um, we had a mutual friend and I used to follow his music. I thought he was a really talented musician. Um, as a as a young young guy, and I say young guy, I think he's he's probably ten, twelve, fifteen years younger than I am, and um, <laughs> or I'm just making him sound really young. But um, so I happened just perchance happened he was inviting me to a show. He was playing with his band locally, and he said, "Hey, you know, I'm doing this thing with John and Todd, and a, you know, and AJ was playing drums, and he passed away, and I don't know. I was just thinking, well, you know, do you have any interest in that? I was like, geez, well, yeah, why not? It's right here, and um, you know, I had really taken myself out of rock and roll on purpose for a while, um, and I said, you know, this is um, this is this feels right." And I spoke with John and then Todd, and I said, look, you know, this is, I just want to have some fun. I don't want to have big egos. I'm not worried about a million record sales. Let's just have fun, make great music, and that's what they wanted to do. And it was kind of, uh, it felt a bit like a love fest from the beginning. And so, you know, that's what we're doing, uh, hoping people like it, not expecting to go on any huge major tours or sell a million plus copies but hey we'll take it if it happens yeah it would be nice so so i do want to ask you about that you did sort of fall off the face of the earth or the rock earth and 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 yeah yeah on purpose why did you have to walk away was it just it left a bitter taste in your mouth because of what happened with skid row or just because the business in general because it is somewhat insidious right i mean it's it's the only business i know where it eats their you know it eats their young yeah it eats their young well it was sort of exactly that mitch i uh, um I mean, I, I don't want to sound, you know, like this disgruntled rock star, because uh, that's certainly not 
what it was about. Uh, but this is a bit of a story. So we'll, we'll take it back to, um, you know, the, obviously the early days of Skid Row and man, you know, people couldn't get enough of Skid Row and everybody loved us and Ahmed Erdogan loved us and, you know, and everything was great and we were great and blah, and life was great. And, um, and then, um, you know, when, as, as things, as the music climate changed, and, uh, you know, we put out Subhuman Race, which I thought was a phenomenal album, and I'm really disappointed that the record company really had no clue what to do with it, um, partly because we had lost some of our our support there. Doug Morris uh, had moved over to Universal. And so there's all, all of these things, all of these back room things started to change in the record company, right? So, so the Skid Row support, you know, the, the, you know, come, we were coming off the heels of Slave to the Grind, which, which obviously was, was amazing. And, and first album and rock, you know, first rock album in history to debut at number one. And so we come off of that. Um, and the music climate has changed. Nirvana comes out, the record company has internal changes. Um, we put out Subhuman Race, which I thought was, and we all felt that it was really, uh, you know, a, a good rock and roll album with, uh, you know, in, in that niche and kind of, kind of combining all of the worlds, worlds that we knew at that time. And I saw things just fall apart, and I saw the the, the band start to fight, and um, you know, things weren't going as they used to be. There was this well-oiled machine. Uh, that I thought was a never, you know, was never going to end, started to lose nuts and bolts. And all of a sudden, um, you know, the, the record company decides we're not, we're not important anymore and stops, stops promoting us. We were out on tour for Subhuman Race. There was no more uh, marketing. Uh, we'd show up, you know, to half full theaters, et cetera, et cetera. And so that got me thinking, you know, well, okay, um, you know, we doing our best here to write great music and put this stuff out. And there's this other entity that truly is controlling our fate as much as, as much as we, as musicians, you know, we, we get, uh, we get in the limelight, we have all this fame and we think we have this power and, and control of things. And actually we don't. And, you know, I, I really felt like, wow, we truly are marionettes and, and the business does control us. And so between that and then the falling, uh, you know, the, 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 the guys, the guys in the band, uh, who once, you know, our, our slogans were, you know, five fingers make a fist, and that was us, and we were really close for many, many years, and things just started falling apart. And I said, you know what, I got to get away from this. Uh, I felt, I felt that a lot of people that I knew in the business were not true; they weren't real people. Um, and I'm pretty true to my word and mean what I say. And I was just tired, tired of being in it. And I didn't want to go on tour again in a in a van. Really, um, I felt like I was I was a, above that in the sense that I just didn't want to do it. <laughs> but um, well, fair enough. I mean, so, you've been on the road with Guns N' Roses, yeah. Aerosmith, right. and Bon Jovi. Right. So yeah, uh, yeah. we we headlined. We headlined right. We headlined uh, with um, uh, Soundgarden and then Pantera and Clutch, and you know we brought out quite a few bands and introduced them and. Um, right. We, we did a lot of touring. And, um, so I just felt that, uh, y- y- you know, it just felt right to, to be away from it all. And, you know, where I live, I do live in New York and, um, and New York was not the hub of the rock and roll scene then, uh, nor is it now, but, uh, I mean, maybe, maybe more of the, the punk stuff, but not exactly what Skid Row was doing. And, uh, you know, so it just, I, I kind of disappeared here. I ended up, um, I started Soul System Orchestras because I had always loved, I actually had actually, that's sort of where that came from, because I had started Soul System while I was, you know, on the on the Slave to the Grind tour with, with uh, the Skids, uh, because Soul System is this big, uh, you know, 10, 12 piece horn band, multi-singers, and, and it was just all about R&B, soul, funk music, and I just loved the big bigness of it. 
and it was very different than rock and roll, and I loved it. Um, and my my styles were different. You know, it it challenged me differently than rock and roll, and uh, it made me really happy. And I, you know, just playing the music and watching people smile made me happy again. And there was nobody judging me, and there was nobody uh, you know telling me false things. And I. I, for once, had control of my own destiny, and that was the most important thing that I felt like I needed to regain. Yeah, so, so there's, a, boy, there's a ton of questions. First of all, let me just take back uh, Subhuman Race for a second. Um, I remember purchasing that as a fan because that's what I did. Uh, were you happy with the mix on that album? Because I think the songs, when you played them live, and there was a you know a live in Tokyo or a live in Japan CD that came out later on, the songs sounded huge and sounded fantastic. But on the album, it seemed as though the vocals and the music were just not at the same level. Were were you noticing that too? I have to say, Mitch, that. <laughs> I have never noticed that. <laughs> now, now are you going to make me go back and listen to the album after all this time and go, man, that sucks? Well, yeah, I don't want to say it's. I mean, I don't want to suggest that it sucks, but I, I just remember. No, I'm teasing. I'm, no, teasing. But I, I'm teasing. But it's, it's sort of that. But I got the first album and it hit me in the face, and the second album punched me in the face, and the third album I just went, "There's something wrong here." The, the, it, oh wait, so are you, I'm sorry. You're talking subhuman race or yeah. straight to the grind? No, sub, subhuman race. Oh, subhuman race. Um, okay, I, I, I believe, I believe, and I, I do, I was, you know, part of this. I, I'm sorry, I thought you were talking about Slave to the Grind. No, 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 that's um, a great album from start to Yeah, play. I love that album. But um, Sub- Subhuman Race, I, I believe we, we purposefully flattened that out a bit. Um, right. You know, we wanted to get, we wanted it to be aggressive and strong, um, and I know, I know, uh, Bob Rock took a different approach there as opposed to the big, huge, uh, you know, balls to the wall, uh, uh, sound of, of the previous album. So I do know we were trying to change it up a bit. And with that said, yes, I did notice that. However, I love the sound of the drums on that album. <laughs> well, the drums are, the, yeah, the drums sound great. Um, okay. So, so now you talk about how you pulled away and said, okay, I don't want to do this again in a van. And I, so then where does Ozone Monday fit into all of this? Because you, you did go out without Sebastian, or in fact, let's not call it that. Let's say you went with the other guys and decided to try this other band, Ozone Monday. Sure. Mm-hmm. Um, what happened there, and why were you convinced that that was the right thing to do? Why did you not pull out before that? Uh, well... I was I was with the guys. It was sort of, um, you know, I, I was at, well. That's really what you know. That was really the catalyst, which is which is why I. That's when I went away. Really, was just because um, we brought in a couple local singers. Um, I wasn't feeling it. You know, I, I I didn't feel the 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 connection, the the power that that the Skid Row that we knew had. Um, as that unit and you know I I was I was there I was there briefly being very hopeful to be honest and it just it just didn't pan out and I didn't I wasn't giving the band uh, my all I wasn't giving them giving them what they had that what they deserved what they needed from a drummer I, I just I didn't like it I wasn't interested it felt wrong and then I uh and then I uh you know that's that's when we decided to se- separate, and I disappeared. Right, right. Now, uh, and I'll just finish with this on Ozo Monday. Was it in fact the game plan to replace Skid Row and continue, and then go on shows and do Skid Row music, or was this really just a side project? And eventually, the plan was next year we'll go back and we'll record another Skid Row album. No, no. This was this was the new Skid Row. Okay. <laughs> This was, you know, it was not the new Skid Row, but it was the new Skid Row. Yeah, okay. It was. Right. Um, okay, so, and, and I guess we'll, talk, we'll start talking about Skid Row at some point. But let me talk about some of these, the bigger tours, because uh, you got to open up for Guns N' Roses, which seemed to go on for ever. I mean, it was, what, two years or three years or, uh, you know, the famous Wembley Stadium show where you got banned for the, for the rest of your lives and all that wonderful stuff. Um, how did you get on that tour and what did that mean to you and to the band? 
Well, I think what that did, uh, getting onto that tour, what it what it did is it really solidified us as a as a rock a hard rock band and not, you know, not a pop not a pop radio pinup band. I think, and it gave us. Uh, you know, real credence as a rock and roll band. And, um, I, you know, and that's what it felt like. And that's what it was. And man, was that, was that a fun two years? <laughs> yeah. Wasn't it? Yeah. Holy cow. Uh, I, you know, I, every once in a while I see pictures, I, I see these recordings that come through on social media and I talk to Matt and slash every once in a while. And it's just, just, you know, it's one of the, one of those, amazing times in life it was just so special and so how did you get that tour was that um was it just the record companies that figured this out or, or how did you Yeah, know that was that was that was management and and us you know we i think right before that we were out with aerosmith which i mean how lucky were we i mean we we started out you know the bon jovi slippery when wet tour which was one of the biggest selling albums of the day and then we we just got to happen to jump on to the newly reunited Aerosmith coming off of Pump right but that that album was huge and then um you know so we were out there and and I think it was just a natural fit um I I really don't remember who initiated how it all came about but um I think management, you know, were were friendly and said, "Hey, my God, what a great this this is this is uh you know this is a no brainer here." Yeah, it it was great because I remember you know I saw all those tours. It was like, oh, hey, Skid Row's here again, fantastic! And then you came with Pantera with uh, the Killer Dwarves opening up in uh, oh in yeah Montreal, right right, which was great. Uh, while you were sort of. Uh, you know, I mean, out on the farm, but I'm saying that sort of facetiously. But while you were out on the farm and you were away from the business and you were away from Ozone and, and Skids and all this, were bands calling you and saying, we need a drummer, come and audition, we need a drummer, we want you to join? Or did you just sort of drop off and the music business forgot about you? Yes, I, I, I dropped off and the music business forgot about me, which I have to say also sort of hurt a little bit as well. But, um, you know, it was partly my own doing. Like I said, you know, I, I disappeared. I, I, uh, you know, got a horse farm up in the country. Um, although I, you know, had the business, I was started the Solstice system orchestra's business, but, uh, which was in the city, but, um, I just, I just, uh, kind of hid low and I didn't really, wasn't looking to be found. I wasn't putting myself out there. And, you know, after a while, people do forget about you. <laughs> so, um, you know, and that's what happened. And, you know, I, I, in one instance, I wanted it. And then in the other instance, I was, you know, upset and hurt by it. But you have to be careful what you ask for sometimes. Yeah. And it's also, it's, it's got to be sort of hard on the ego because, you know, here you are in 89, 90, 91, and everybody wants you. You know, MTV wants to interview you, and radio wants to talk to you, and fans want to touch your your shirt, and everybody wants you, and then nobody wants you. So, so there must have been a period of time where you, you, you sat down, and was there a depression that came in, or just a like, holy fuck, I mean, how, how can you just forget about me like that? Yeah, yeah, well, you know, welcome, welcome to the music business, <laughs> and welcome, you know, um, but yes, it, uh, it took its toll on, um, with alcohol and drugs and then also, uh, many, many years of therapy, uh, which, uh, fortunately replaced, uh, well, I don't, I don't want to say I don't drink. I definitely drink. Uh, but, um, you know, I, I got away from the dangerous part of that and, re- you know, did did many years of therapy, still in it, still discuss it, still talk about it. And, you know, um, it's uh, it, it, anybody that's been through this knows how how hard and deep it cuts. And many, you know, a lot, a lot of us don't get through it as, as well and as lucky as I did. Um, and I feel fortunate for that, frankly. Yeah, and you should, and of course, Four by Fate is a great band for for you to come back with because yeah. knowing John and Todd, yeah. there's not going to be all kinds of stress and agendas. It's just going to be let's play some shows and have some fun. Right, right. Well, everybody knows what this is. You know, it's 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 a good rock band, some good music. It's there's you know there's no no pulling punches here, and uh, let's just have fun. Put the check the ego 
at the door. We've all been there. You know, we don't, we don't need the egos. This needs to be fun. Yeah. And, and I think it should be, um, I am one of those that, it's, that is uh, convinced that a Skid Row reunion will never happen, unfortunately. Um, d- do you think at any point, though, uh, people can be friends? Or why is it so far from being a possibility? Well, I, I mean, I, ha- I have to I mean, I am friendly with all four other guys. Right, um, which is amazing. I, I've, well, I've worked hard at it. I, I didn't, you know, I felt they were. I spent a third of my life with these guys, and I felt that I shared an, an immeasurable, immeasurable amount of of things with them, and they will always be very, very dear and important to me. And um, human relationships are very important to me. And um, those relationships with these guys were very important. So I've tried, I've tried to nurture the best I can with each other, with each of them, um, some some form of relationship. However, it, however it it uh, you know it looks. Uh, as far as everybody, I, I I'm really not in the position to talk about that. I think everybody's you know everybody has had their piece and their say, and I think that um, uh, you know there there's things that probably should have been said a long time ago and, and weren't. And, um, and, you know, I, I, I'm not sure if I'd ever, I'd never say never, but, um, you know, I mean, I, I would certainly love, I would certainly love to see it, but, uh, you know, we'll, we'll see what happens, Mitch. I, I don't know. Yeah. I mean, listen, as a fan, I would love to see it, but when I look at Guns N' Roses and when I look at Van Halen stuff, those impossible reunions that happened, you go, Oh, Okay. But this one, for some reason, I just don't get that feeling. I certainly hope uh, it comes to pass. Um, well, I'm, I, I tell you what. I mean, as much as I love those guys in Guns, I mean, I was disappointed. That's not a reunion. Well, it was, yeah. It was, it was Duff and Slash and Axel. Right. Well, they're you calling know, it the I, return of Guns N' Roses. Um, yeah. When Skid Row was... When... That, that, that disappointed me. I mean, I was I was really excited when I heard, you know, the return, but... It it fell a little short. Yeah, but but there are I think there are some bands where you can have sort of two of the main guys and it's good enough in, in the sense that if Aerosmith went out and called it Aerosmith with just Steven and Joe, even though I would miss Tom and Joey Kramer, I, I think I could buy into it. And, and with Guns, you know, Axel and Slash... Yeah, that yeah, and Duff, and yep. I, I love Duff, but honestly, if they had said it's just Axel and Slash, I I would have been. I mean, Duff really is like the cherry on top for me. <laughs> yeah. You know, no no offense, but uh, well, I would have I would have loved to have seen Izzy there, and I also would have loved to have seen either either Matt or Steven. Um, you know, I think you know, I think that I, I guess I guess maybe I'm partial, but I. I think, uh, you know, I, I do think that a drummer brings a very specific sound back to the band, and it's very hard to reproduce that feel of that drummer. And you can, you can replay the parts, but it's just, I, I find it different. Maybe it's because I'm sensitive to it, but right. I feel um, that. Well, you I can't get that swing or whatever. Um, if the Skid Row guys today called you up and said, we want you to come back and be our drummer is that something that you would be interested in, or for you, it has to be the five, or don't even bother calling? <laughs> um, you know, I had I had said that uh, early early on. I said, look, you know, it this doesn't make sense to do without Sebastian. It's not Skid Row. Um, you know, I, I feel that uh, you know as much as. You know, Rachel and Snake wrote most of the music. Um, you know, Sebastian was a very strong part of that band and the success of that band, as was the, the songwriting. I mean, between the songwriting and Sebastian, you know, there's it's huge. And I just really felt that it was never going to be the same. And, you know, um, I mean, look at history. It re- re- rarely is with a different singer. I, I think, you know, maybe... Like you said, Van Halen did it with with uh, with Sammy. With Sammy, right? Um, 
but you know that's that's the only one that really comes to mind that was really you know that really made a dent in the world um well, so i mean yes you know, and no i mean iron maiden replaced a diano with bruce dickinson yep. and i can right, right, you right, can right, certainly right, argue right, that they've been true. successful with bruce right um, yep. oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes they have a little bit and right? they, they still they, they still continue to be um, um, let me ask you whose fault, whose fault was that whose fault was that on the runway by the way that was a bruce's fault was it what runway Oh, uh, the, yeah, they, uh, no, no, no. The, they had a little accident, the, the accident with their, no, that, with their that, that plane. The, uh, not the road crew, the, uh, the, the airport crew that, that smashed into their beautiful plane. Uh, the tour and, the, the, the tour. <laughs> Those poor guys. Well, I, I'm, sure, I'm sure they're getting that fixed. Yeah, well, they got it fixed but, and they're, they're flying again. But the, uh, the poor tour um, underwriters of, for the insurance must have just been absolutely thrilled with that bill when it came in um oh yeah right right i'll, I'll finish on the skid row <laughs> stuff on this because Go ahead. I, but Go ahead. i get a sense that you're uncomfortable talking about skid row is that just sort of my perception being skewed or does it sort of it's a touchy subject with you um it's a touchy subject yeah yeah, okay. uh, and I'm I'm certainly you know I'm certainly happy to answer the questions. I'm not, um, but yes, I do. It's you know I don't um, like I said I have I have a good relationship with these, all the guys. I I would do a reunion in a heartbeat if it wasn't without Sebastian. I, I'm still not sure I would do it at this point. I I don't um, you know. I think Sebastian and I together in a reunion with the other three would would be a really great thing. I think if I joined Skid Row, you know, I'm not I, I'm not sure how much of a wave that's going to make in in the puddle, you know. Uh, but together, at you know, we're we're um, the sum of the parts, as they say, yeah. right? No, I, I agree. And uh, if you rejoin Skid Row, I guess you'd have to change the name back to Ozone Monday. So that would just be. <laughs> That would be odd, wouldn't it? Um, <laughs> right? Um, you know, so, so all right. So, so looking back on the career and stuff, you must be obviously very proud of what you guys accomplished because the first album, you know, I Remember You, that single, Slave to the Grind, you, you can't look back with any regret. You must look back and just say, holy fuck, for, for those five years or ten years, we had it. We were it. I, I do. I do. And, you know, that's one thing that I try to keep present is, you know, to to remember what you have or what you have had and not what you never had or not what you don't have any longer, you know. Um, so, yeah, to 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 enjoy and and to be proud and and to feel fulfilled about what I have done in the past with that band and uh the, you know i think just all that we we were part of in that whole uh music scene at, at you know the late 80s and 90s was just incredible and i'm you know extremely lucky to be a part of that and um you know and so uh i i try to move forward with no regrets although i miss i miss it very much and would love to be a part of it again and who knows you know who knows i would never say never well yeah you, you, well you certainly got you and you've got four by fate and of course uh we'll quickly yes. mention uh, soul system orchestra i know that you have uh, contact info and there's a website do you want to give that out so so folks can because you you do pretty much everything you'll do weddings you'll do um corporate events you're you're sort of a all-purpose entertainment yeah, well, it it so the Soul System band was started just basically out of my love of the old school R and B Motown, and you know I used to come off stage and once the bolt bus would roll, I'd put on Sly and the Family Stone, I'd put on Old Temptations, you know, all kinds of stuff, whatever, uh, Percy Sledge, and I just I just loved it, and I said decided when I got off tour I was going to start this this uh, this band, so I did that and. Uh, it just it just really b became popular you know we were playing just random clubs just for fun and then i started to get calls for hey you know can you do this corporate event here and i was like oh i got a i got a business here so i 
sort of parlayed that into a business and put it on the side, um, you know, just wondering when I might need to pull it out. And after after the band broke up, uh, 1978, 1998, I'm sorry, 1997, 1998, um, you know, I, I, I was waiting in a bit. I was like, okay, what's going to happen here? Is this, is this, is this the end of Skid Row or what? So uh, I wanted to appear that it just wasn't going to, the pieces weren't going to get back together. Um, you know, I, I then put this company together, Soul System Orchestras. And so basically, yes, I'm a band leader for this band Soul System that still exists. And we do, you know, it goes from a 10 to 16, 20 piece band and we do big band swing. And it provides me the forum to play every style of music, you know, from the swing to the R&B Motown, we play rock and roll. In fact, we play Skid Row songs. We play Crew. We play Metallica, and and it's a it's it's basically a um, you know it's a product for a for corporate and large uh, private events, weddings as well. Yeah, and we also you know now now it's a full blown company where I I'm basically I, I act as an agent for the bands and you know various ensembles. So that's that's what I do. Yeah, and, and, and I play with Four by Fate, and yeah. hopefully uh, we're going to get out on the road soon, Mitch. Yeah, and hopefully you'll you'll get up to Canada. I know that uh, I've I've pushed the band onto a couple of bars here, and hopefully they'll 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 pick them up and and get you in there because uh, I think it'll be great, and and it's also nice to to get back out there doing original music and not just having to join you know the other version of quiet riot or a new version of the bullet boys it's nice to be right right right, right, you know? right yes yeah this is this is this is um it's all original although we do you know when we play live we we sort of uh you know take a piece of each of our pasts and we include that in the show so that's fun that's the fun part of that so you get to hear a little bit of of all of us yeah which is great um rob a great pleasure and i know we said 20 minutes we made half an hour and and i still got 87 questions you know bon jovi tour and aerosmith tour and this and that and but it, but we'll uh, we'll we'll stop there. Well, we'll why don't we'll you of, put them put them in a vault and uh, we'll do a part two. We'll, we'll talk we'll talk again, Mitch. It's uh, you know we'll make a date. There you go. Thank you, Rob. Great. Thank pleasure. you so much. Been a pleasure. Absolutely. Thank you, Mitch. Cheers. And there you have it, folks. My interview with original Skid Row drummer Rob Afuso, currently playing with Four by Faith. The new album is relentless. Remember to never say never. Check me out on Twitter at Mitch LaFon and on Facebook one-on-one at Mitch LaFon. Thank you for listening, and uh, bye for now. Oh, my.